For this demo, I'm using the MDF Grand Piano and I've painted it with white gesso inside and out. Uh, to build it, you get full instructions, full written instructions, and there's also a full video on our YouTube channel, uh, Samantha K Crafts. So what I'm doing now is I'm using a glossy um, gel pen to colour in the black keys on the keyboard. Uh, I could use a fine liner, I could use an alcohol marker. This is how the keyboards come, so you can see it's all engraved on there, so you're not having to guess uh, where the pieces go. Um, I could use any of them type of pens, but I wanted it to have that sort of glossy look uh, when it was finished. I know the rest of the piano is going to have a sort of a shabby chic look, which is why I've done it in the gesso. I'm quite happy with it in the gesso, but I did want the keys to have the sort of shiny look that they would have if they were on a real uh, sort of piano. So I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but uh, you should be able to see this sort of that glossy look to the keys. You can also see in there, you can still see the lines uh, from where that engraving is. So um, you can draw in obviously the lines if you want to or just leave it as it is. So um, I'm going to be using some other MDF bits on this. So things like this scroll hinge I'm going to cut in half and a good pair of scissors or a good craft knife will do that. And then they will go nicely on the hinge pieces and look really smart. Um, I'm going to use some of the other um, music, well, just this one other piece from one of the music sets, uh, and I'm going to cut it so that I've just, you know, it shows you don't have to use it as it is, as the whole piece is. I'm going to cut it and just use this one section um, to decorate the piano with. I've got a couple of other little MDF bits to go on the side of the piano, but for the decoration on top, I'm going to sort of use this bit and cut it up. So I'm cutting the ends off of this now oops and uh, I've said it in other other demos before please make sure you're wearing protective goggles or something over your eyes you do not want to get a piece of MDF in your eye when you're sort of cutting it if it pings off like that so have a little play until you're happy with sort of how it's going to look uh, these are looking a little bit like claws on here at the moment so I might not use them like this but um, you know, just have a play, see if it's what you want, see if it's how you want it. Uh, and I'm going to use a stencil that you can see to the side to sort of stencil on top. So um, there's a sort of big area that's sort of going to be not covered by MDF. And what I'm going to do is put a bit of stencil there and then highlight the stencil in and that will sort of fill that gap. So fitting in with the shabby chic theme, um, which always reminds me of a sort of French style, uh, this... I'm saying uh, a lot, I'm sorry. This stencil has got like a French um, writing on it. So I thought it was perfect. And these lines here, I don't actually want them on there because I think they will uh, block it off too much and just won't won't look right. So I'm cu I've covered them as well. And now I'm just using a texture paste to uh, go over the stencil carefully. And um, this is a this is a pre-made one, but obviously you can make your own. There are lots of um, tutorials out there showing different ways to make it using household products or different products. So carefully put that on there. Put any excess back in your pot. And now I'm going to lift the stencil up really carefully. And even with the um, paste just straight on there without being highlighted you can already see it sort of stands out against this sort of shabby chic sort of look but I absolutely love it. it fits perfect with a shabby chic um, theme but obviously you don't have to have stencil you can use whatever you want on there now that corner at the top uh, I decided didn't look right with a line so I cut another section out of this musical strip and I'm going to use that piece instead to put up the top I think that looks much better and not only does it look better but if I hadn't cut the other ends off as well, um, I'm still I'm still left, and I still would be left with even more so of a piece to use on something else. So you know, nothing goes to waste. But the nice thing is, you don't have to use these pieces as they come to you. You know, cut into them, break them apart, just you know, use them for bits of interest on other on other projects. They're sort of great to use. So I'm painting over. Um, oh, I'm saying um a lot. I'm so so sorry. I'm painting over this in a gold. Now, you can't see it in the video, but it's a real shimmery uh, gold. It's a real sort of subtle gold, and it's quite a light gold. Now, to go with the sort of shabby chic and the, the dusky sort of pinks and whatever else, I want to make that look a bit bit older. Still like gold, still shiny, but a little bit older. So I'll do that in, I'll do that in a minute. But 
for now, I'm painting them all and all the other elements that I've got with this very shiny, sparkly, uh, pretty gold. So all my pieces are done and they're near enough ready to go on. But as you can see also, when I put it against the piano, with it being such a light gold, it does actually blend in quite a bit with the white. So again, by putting a little bit of ageing on it, in a second or just a bit of tarnish or however you want to sort of put it with the gold it will just help them sort of stand out a little bit more from the piano so uh, I'm gluing these on now uh, but what I should really have done is put the you know done the aging before I glued them on just in case but uh, you get you, you know you get the idea so I'm now gluing on uh, the side piece this side piece I've already done uh, and is ready to go on and I'm just putting some glue on. I'm putting it on an acrylic uh, block just so that I can tap my finger into it and tap over it. They're fine pieces. They're delicate pieces. And it's easier. I find it easier to put it on with my finger than I do ruining a brush or clogging up a brush or a brush still goes into the gaps or, uh, or putting it on with a nozzle. Even a fine nozzle then takes forever. It's quicker and easier, I find, using my fingers. If you don't want to use your fingers, don't. So... All these flowers and that to the side are going to go in and go round and I want it all to look sort of a really nice shabby chic sort of age style. So like I said a minute ago, I'm going to now sort of help tarnish this gold a little bit or age it a little bit. Now that looks very bronzy on screen, I know that, but it's not. It's actually antique gold and I'm not covering the whole thing in it, I'm just covering the edges. So it is, it is a gold on gold, uh, there are two different types of gold, but as you can hopefully see... It brings the shiny, you've still got the shininess of the original gold, but it just brings it down a little bit and it also um, helps it stand out, helps it stand out from that white of the piano. So I'm making sure all the side pieces are done as well and I'm also going to do the other decorative pieces that are going to go on top of the piano. And I'm, I'm just literally putting a tiniest amount, with this gilding wax you need the tiniest, tiniest amount I'm putting the tiniest amount on. I am going over it uh, really lightly, catching the corners. But I'm also, I'm not just catching the corners to make it stand out. I am actually catching some of the flats of it, as you can see there. Um, just because it's not just to make it stand out. So I don't want just the edges done. It is to make the whole thing look a little bit more older and aged. And I just think it, I just think it makes it all fit more look a bit more realistic and just fit more so once you're happy with where they're going to go we can move on to the next step so i've got these here i don't actually know what they are uh, they came in an embossing set i've never used them but they were a beautiful shabby pink color and they're great they're not actually embossing powders if you heat them they don't do anything so i'm putting some glue on the piano again dabbing it with my finger because i don't want loads and loads of glue putting a bit of paper underneath to catch it and I'm just shaking them on now I'm shaking them on in the area under where my decorative piece is going to go so I don't want them I mean again I think they look quite nice on the piano on their own without having the decorative piece on there but I just want to again help lift that decorative piece off the piano and I also want to bring a bit of the pinks and duskiness onto the top of the piano as well so I'm doing exactly the same on the back piece ready for the back um, decorative piece as well and um, once I've put it on I'm just tapping it off a bit like if you were using a glitter or that and I put it back in can I describe it? it's a bit like um it's a bit like broken shells but it's not broken shells so I don't know what it, I, I don't actually know what it is but they're just like flakes but they are really nice they do look really nice on there so I'm just glad I finally got a use for them so when you pop the pieces over like that as you can see it just helps them stand out it just gives a bit a bit more to look at um and yeah it just brings that sort of shabby chic feeling a little bit more so i'm going to use the same gilding wax that i used on the gold pieces i'm going to use really lightly over the um 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 um, um. <laughs> so i'm so sorry i'm going to use over the stenciled area and like i said earlier it already stands out anyway from the white because it's more of a creamy colour. So I am only going to use, I'm not making it all look gold. I'm using the lightest of touches just to help sort of accentuate it and just make it stand out that little bit more. And and also age it that little bit, you know, give it that, that slightly older, more sort of used look. So, yeah, just um, applying 
applying that and that bit there was a bit of I'm not just doing it on the edge of the piano that is a bit of the um, stencil as you can see in the corner there but that's just you know you can see it's not all over it it's not all gold but it's just highlighted enough that you can see it and it and it pops that little bit more from from the piano but without being in your face so now again using my finger to put the glue on the back of the pieces I'm going to add these pieces onto the piano so uh, yeah again if if this isn't your cup of tea to use your finger use your brush whatever way you want to apply your glue you apply it uh, any good glue will sort of stick this on and that's it that's my pieces on top so now back to the keyboard as you can see I did did draw some lines I just drew the lines in with pencil you can draw them in with pen you can use a ruler or you could not draw them in at all because you can when it's closer see the lines are still there so I drew them in with pencil and I'm stuck it on and pushed it down so now I've got my hot glue gun ready and you can see that I have stuck the piano using these bits of card so that it sits just open. So I don't want to stuff it with the flowers and the flowers hold the weight of the piano up because they're squashing. But these bits inside will hold the weight of the lid up without squashing the flowers but still leave a gap for the flowers. Uh, I found this um, piece of, uh, oh, what do you call them? Uh, not embellishment, there's another word for it, isn't it? E ephemera? Was it ephemera? Was that the right word? This piece of paper in little, sort of an ephemera pack. And again, it fitted perfect with the theme that I wanted and perfect colour. So I'm just propping it up on the piano so that I know where it's going. And I've actually made this piece here so it helps the base of the piece of paper sit away from the piano so that it doesn't sit flat and it sort of can sit at an angle. But I had propped it there to start with just so I knew where to put the flower on the other side. And then I'm going to stick this in place and I'm using the hot glue um, to do that. And then I'm going to stick uh, some more flowers and just deciding which ones are sort of going to go in there. That, the one I just had in my hand was a paper rose that I've done, so I've got loads. The one in my hand now is a metal flower that I made on a show ages ago, you know. Use whatever ones you've got that you think the colours will go. And I've also, with all the flowers, just either dry brushed them with white gesso or put some white gesso onto the, my acrylic block and then flicked it. Uh, like added some water and flicked it over the flowers to give the look so now I've added that I'm going to add the rest of the flowers and I'll be back so this is it this is the finished piece all I did was uh, go round bit by bit adding the glue you know gluing the flowers into place um, if I couldn't if they didn't sit properly on the edge I added a bit of cardboard to the base of the flowers and added them on and that is it that's your piano done Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell notification if you want to keep updated on future videos.